it's fantastic to be here in Latvia with this orchestra who are just perfect for this piece. Of all the pieces I play from the classical repertoire, this one is nearest my worlds of improvisation and non-classical music. It, it's an interesting piece in that it's written from a very Christian point of view, but what I think works about it is that uh, the emotional narrative of this piece is completely universal. There are a couple of things that people always notice the first time they hear this piece, and one of them is this massive build-up of this chord at the beginning. First of all, the cello starts, yeah. and then the cello is suspended on this really high note. One by one, eight parts come in and join the cello with this huge chord build-up. Um, and that chord is a F major with a six. Um, there's also a Beatles song called She Loves You, Yeah, 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 uh, which ends with exactly the same chord, this very close harmony sixth chord. Tavener worked with the Beatles in the 60s, for sure he knew this, um, this piece, so I'm quite sure he did that on purpose. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's the secular entry point to the piece. There's an enormous number of emotional contrasts in this piece. There's, you know, it really goes from ecstatically happy. It's just full on festival carnival happiness. It's wonderful. And all the strings are playing different lines at different times, but it all lines up and it's just the most exuberant music. And then you've got parts which are just desolate. You know, the part, the, the lament of Mary um, at the foot of the cross is, is as desolate of anything I've, as an, anything I've ever had to play on the cello. It's just as you would imagine from that scenario. Um, even though it's all notated, I don't improvise at all, that feeling of improvising is absolutely key. And I am improvising in the sense that I'm making up phrasing, sound colour, vibrato all the time. Having spent time with John Tavener working on this piece, one of the things he said was um, that he was listening to a huge amount of Indian music at the time. So for instance in The Lament it's full of quarter tones, uh, it's full of slides and there I've really tried to draw on my experience of, of working with Indian musicians playing the, the ornaments that they call the mean and the gamak and uh, there was a lot of Indian flavour in there. And when you come to the piece from that standpoint all of a sudden it, uh, it feels very different, it means something different and I have a different sort of route of access. So I, I, I got to a stage yesterday in this kind of famous double stopping passage where my hand, my double jointedness just wouldn't allow me to play. I couldn't get over the click in the joint. So I kept on my bottom thumb position, kept on being out just from exhaustion of the muscles, which, which sort of restrain it.
and I, while I was playing, I think you can't make music like this, surely. But actually, it sounded really good. I think it's the take we'll probably use in the end, which was strange for me. Um, that sort of disparity between what I was actually feeling and what was coming out. But maybe, maybe the pain makes you concentrate more. Maybe it gets you more in the moment because you can't take anything for granted. I don't know. Good. Done. Great. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Should we just listen again? Yeah. So the thing about the classical recording process is that um, it's not concerned with perfection, because there is no such thing. It's concerned with getting as far down the road to perfection as you possibly can. And when you're a professional classical musician, you are repeating things trillions of times, and each time you're refining, 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 so that by the end you're listening to the speed of vibrato, and does the vibrato change if you play a subsequent note that needs a stretch, and things like that. The level of detail is actually quite bonkers. When you're recording, you have to sort of do two things at the same time. One, you absolutely have to chase that perfection. But at the same time, you've got to realise that actually most people, when they listen to this music, they're listening to the whole emotional tapestry of the composition. <laughs> 